So, I'm excited for this young brother. High school students, y'all are about to be impacted. Get your notebooks out, get out the bed, cut Netflix off, cut the game off, cut your laptop off, and get on this live stream and learn some wonderful stuff. I'm going to turn the floor over to this young brother, Mr. Madeline. How's it going, sir? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Um, what a joy and a delight it is to share with you today. I'm privileged uh, for the opportunity as well as the invitation. Uh, what, a, um, uh, what a joy, as I said, and a delight it is uh, to be able to be amongst the land of the living this morning. Uh, the Lord has a word for us this morning. Uh, that is to be found in the book of Joshua. Joshua beginning in the 6th chapter and we'll start at the 25th verse Joshua uh, chapter 6 uh, verse 20 uh, verse verse 25 I'm reading today out of the uh, uh, the new living translation and it reads like this um, so Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute and her relatives who were in the house uh, because she had hidden the spies Joshua sent to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites today. Let's talk to God. God, we thank you for the ability to um, uh, commune and fellowship today. God, it is my prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. So, God, it is my prayer that that of which you have prepared me to say, allow it to impact someone, allow it to bless someone, allow it to change someone. And God, that's our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, for the time a lot of yours and ours to share together, I want to preach tonight, or today rather, um, from the sermonic topic uh, titled, You've Been Kept on Purpose. You've Been Kept on Purpose. Uh, brothers and sisters, as I reflect uh, to this moment in time, as I think about all the things God has uh, given us to defeat, uh, such as COVID-19 and xenophobia, I, I pause to recognize that it is only by his ability to keep me that I'm able to do what he has called me to do. Uh, which, uh, when, when I consider the thought of being kept, it not only causes me to exclaim and rejoice in thanksgiving uh, because I know I've been kept, but it also crosses my mind uh, the concern of which, why does God continue to keep us? The true and uncut reality is I have experienced moments in my life. I have made some choices in my life. Uh, I have made some decision, decisions in my life that don't exactly warrant or justify God's reasoning for keeping me, meaning there are literally some things I should have been exempted from. There are some opportunities I should have been disqualified for. There are some places that I should not have gone, but some kind of way between a rock and a hard place. He, he thought so deep of a wretch like me to save and keep me in spite of me. And I just believe that there is someone watching today with that same testimony. I, and if we were to keep it real this morning, if we were to avoid sugar stuff this morning, I believe, I, I believe we all have done some things that perhaps should have uh, eliminated us uh, from being a candidate uh, for this thing called favor that God continues to grant us with. And if, um, and, and this morning, I have simply come to tell somebody. Uh, that despite how crazy it may be uh, an area surrounding you, you are able to wake up this morning because he kept you. I have simply come to share a thought with you this morning. I believe that God's ability or willingness to keep you is not done by him himself. It, it, I'm sorry, it is done by him himself. It is not uh, by a lottery pick or a systematic or a methodical development because the reality is God can use anybody. And even that, I believe, God owes us nothing. And so I have uh, come to conclude this conference this morning uh, to simply say this. Uh, if God can, if God made a choice to keep me in spite of me, out of anyone in this world he could have he could have used for any particular assignment, he must have kept me. Watch this, because there, there's an assignment with my name on it. We find confirmation of this in Jeremiah 29 and 11, that God, give, that God knows the plans he has for us. Plans of peace and to prosper, not to harm, to give hope and 
a future and an expected end. I believe uh, that purpose is something that he has called and created us for. It is the reason you are here whether you know it or not. Purpose is something that eventually has to evolve. It, it, it must happen. A purpose is a contract uh, between you and God. It, it, it is ultimately a contract between you and God. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a contract that can't be revisited or renegotiated or or, or, or it, it can't be reconsidered. Um, because the reality is, I uh, understand that this contract uh, it did not need your stamp of approval. It, it, it did not need your signature. Signature. It, it, it has been in commission since the beginning of time. Purpose is something that uh, we go after for for a lifetime. It is something that may not be understood at some points in our lives. Purpose is authentically yours. And as I said, purpose has to happen. But while it has to happen, understand that in this contract, there is a warning or a disclaimer. In every contract, there is a warning or a disclaimer. And in this contract, it tells us that this thing called life may not always pan out as we anticipate it to, but it reassures us that eventually it shall come to pass. Disclaimers are times in life or those moments that seem irregular to us, those moments that show inconsistencies to us, those moments uh, that, 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 that confuse us or mess us up. Uh, this means when things in life just don't match up. Disclaimers are those things that make you question your faith and better yet, sometimes terminate your trust in God. It was purpose that Moses had when he when he was saved from a reckless ruler. But the disclaimer was he, he would live in the house of his enemy only to later free the nation. It was purpose that David had who was anointed to be the greatest king to rule over Israel. But the disclaimer was the purpose who guide, the person, sorry, who guided David would later try to kill him before he got there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. It was purpose that Jeremiah had, uh, who had a word that said, before you were formed, I knew you, and I called you. But the disclaimer was that God had called, the disclaimer was what God had called him to do, would also be the hint that had him referred to as the weeping prophet because his purpose caused him to cry sometimes. That, that right there, brothers and sisters, tells us that it is possible to have a calling on your life. It is possible to be chosen by God. Uh, it, it, it is possible to have a contract with God and still suffocate or suffer as a result. Uh, that, oh, God, that'll preach right there. Have you ever felt as though your call, the calling on your life uh, showed, uh, showed you more pain than purpose? Have you ever felt like your assignment was too much to bear? Have you ever felt like you have been serving, serving and suffering at the same time? Today, I simply want to remind you that you're not the only one uh, because something I've learned is that purpose will lead you into something called process. I'll say that again. Purpose is something that will lead you into process. It is purpose that will pull on you even when you feel as though the process is too much. It is purpose that will keep you up even though you feel as though you want to quit. It is purpose that will keep pursuing you even after you stop pursuing it. It is purpose that will keep the relationship with God uh, when the process has you broken. It won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it. It won't always be easy, but it but but it is always possible. Sometimes you have you will feel as though you are drowning in your purpose. But I have discovered that purpose doesn't always offer a joyous journey, but it is always an exciting destination. And I have simply come with an assignment today to let someone know that your purpose is worth it. Every battle, every issue, every problem, uh, every struggle, it, 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 I'm telling you, it's worth it. Every time you smile through the pain and laugh. Even in the rain, it's worth it. Every time you illuminate your pillow with tears at night, it is worth it. Somebody ought to shout right from where they are. It's, it's worth it. Well, preacher, how do I know my purpose is worth it? Well, our text this morning gives the prime time example. It tells us that it, it, it is possible to have purpose and still struggle with disclaimers. In our text, Joshua 6 and 25, we, we, we find this excerpt that excites my soul. And Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute. Uh, these words simply aligned with what was said in Joshua 2. It is nearly impossible that we can celebrate Joshua 6 without realizing Joshua 2. Uh, Rahab, sorry, I was in 
was positioning herself to discover her purpose by listening and submitting to the will and to the voice of God. It may sound crazy, but yeah, a prostitute, or can I keep it real, as we would call it in 2020, a thought is positioning herself to find purpose. It is, it, isn't it strange, y'all, how a prostitute had enough sense and enough logic, had enough discernment to reroute her destiny by listening and submitting uh, to the voice of God? This tells us that God can speak to anybody, and I'm glad about it, because the reality is if we can take off, if we take, if we take off the church act, oh yeah, if we take off the church act, we will discover that we are nothing as a filthy rags that should have been dis disconnected from God's favor. I, I wish someone helped me preach this thing. You ought to, you you you, you, you ought to take 4.8 seconds and just celebrate God and His purpose that He has on your life. I'll stick to the text in Joshua too. We find the story of Rahab. Joshua then sends out two spies to spy over the land that he is about to possess. Joshua sends out two spies to spy over Jericho. He then instructed them to go and look over the place God promised them. So now the two spies end up at Rahab's house. Now here's the issue. Rahab is chosen to be the house where they stay at, but the disclaimer is she is a prostitute. And the king of the land got word that she had these two men in her house, and they come and they and, and they came and said bring out the Israelites who, who, who have hidden here. Uh, but the word tells us that, he had, that, that she had hidden the men on the roof under Underneath some flags. She then proceeds to tell them, Yes, they were here, but they aren't here now. And I don't know which way they went. And then, then, then she goes on, then she goes to where she hid the men. And then uh, she said, I know that the Lord. Oh, God. She said, I know that the Lord has given you this land. I did. She goes on to say that great fear has fallen on us. God, I'm getting happy. Uh, this is just clarifying the fact that God can use anyone. Uh, she had enough discernment to be able to yield to the voice of God. Uh, they, 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 they go on to tell her uh, that when we come to take the land, tie a scarlet cord to the window, and when we see it, we will spare that house. So now the war comes, Je 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 Joshua is ready to claim his land. Rahab ties the cord. And our, our text tells us that Joshua spared Rahab. The term spared literally means to be made safe and secure. The, 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 this tells us Rahab was kept by, despite the disclaimer in her life. But, but the question I'm going to ask this morning is simply this. Why was Rahab kept? Uh, the, 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 that may be also the same question that is also crossing your mind. But brothers and sisters, as we continue to navigate through the book of Joshua, it is my discovery that Rahab has been kept on purpose. Oh God, I feel like preaching. This morning you have tuned in questioning God's merited keeping power over your life. You may have been, you may have been wondering how in the world are you still making it. Uh, you, 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 you may be wondering how you are still surviving. Uh, but maybe you have been questioning what you have, what, what have I done so worthy that causes God to continue to keep me? I have simply come to tell you one thing and one thing only. I have come to answer your question this morning with a simple response. What's that response, my brother? You have been kept on purpose. Oh God, you aren't here by accident or incident. You are here because God intended for so. You've been kept on purpose because it is by this contract that God makes decisions on our destiny or future. The Bible tells us that God is not a man that he shall lie. And so this simply means that despite any disclaimer, my purpose has to evolve. Help me preach this day. The journey may not always be what I anticipate. Watch this. But whatever God has spoke over you has to happen. Decree and declare right now. Uh, but now the second question I want to raise today is how do I know that uh, I have been kept on purpose? Well, let's zoom in on Rahab's life once more. Rahab was a prostitute whose life was spared from the face of death because of her submission and yielding to God. I'll say that again. Rahab was a prostitute whose life was spared in the face of death because of her submission and yielding to God. I've just simply come to tell that I've just simply come today to share a thought with you that your ability to listen to the voice of God will keep you from destruction. In other words, it is your discernment that will keep you from destruction. Help me preach this thing. Oh God. I, I find it amazing that we learn that that that, that, that in Sunday school, we learn that doing wrong cuts us off from God's will. 
uh, we, we learn as a child that sin is displeasing to God. I would assume that a Rahab would be cut off from God because sin builds a wall between you and God. But here it is, Rahab had enough discernment to hear the voice of God, which tells us her spirit was furthermore progressed than her flesh. Oh, God, help me. Uh, this tells us that Rahab was kept because she wasn't born to be ordinary. Watch that. Point number one, she was kept because she was not born to be ordinary. I'd like to recommend that same thing to you. You have been kept because you were not born to be ordinary. She was a prostitute with spiritual discernment. I've come to tell you that if she was ordinary, she would have missed what God, what God was saying. The fact that she heard God, despite what was going on, tells us that even in our weakest points of life, it is our spirit, oh God, that will make room for us in hell and help me preach this thing. Uh, she, she, she was able to understand that she may be broken right now, but her spirit is still functioning. And just like Rahab, I have come to tell you, you were not born to be ordinary because despite what it may feel like, something is telling you to hold on just a little while longer. You were not born to be basic or ordinary because the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world because when God has a destiny assigned to you, your spiritual person will do things, watch this, that your flesh hasn't even caught up to. I'll say that one more time. I when I'm sorry, when your spirit is able to progress more than your flesh, your spirit will understand more than, oh God, help me preach this thing. Getting back, getting back to the text, not only was she kept because she wasn't born to be ordinary, but she was also kept because she acknowledged God's will. God's will will always make a way. Oh God, 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 I repeat that again. She was also kept because she acknowledged God's will, and God's will always will make a way. Understand that to make is to develop create or cultivate. I understand Rahab could have tried to stop these two spies, which would have delayed the possessions. No, she didn't. But Rahab had enough sense to know that this was God's will. Uh, the Bible says that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so understand that Rahab could have tried to stop them, but she understood that what was happening was God's will. Help me preach this thing. Uh, not only did she have enough sense and discernment to know that it was his will, she also also had enough discernment to yield to the will. It's one thing. Oh God, help me preach. That'll preach right there. It's one thing to recognize the will. But watch this. It's another thing to yield to the will. I'll say that one more time. It's one thing to recognize God's will, but it's another thing to yield to God's will. Uh, also, then the spies made her a promise, and, and, and Rahab only her only request was that she was to be spared. How uh, the spies went on to say, "For your kindness, we have inherited this land." And we will treat you kindly and faithfully. I'm closing y'all, I promise. I will, meaning when they get the land, uh, they would have rule, they have, they have rule over the area. But they develop a contract with no disclaimer with Rahab. This this particular contract, it, it, it had no disclaimer. Uh, that not only will we spare you, but we're going to treat you kindly. Uh, because she yielded to God's will. God's God made a way and gave her more than she expected. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, th th that'll preach right there. She simply uh, asked. Uh, she simply asked to be kept. But God kept her and gave her a care package. Uh, he exceeded her expectations. Does anyone else have that same testimony? You simply wanted to make it out alive. You simply wanted him to spare your life some kind of way. He blessed you in the midst of it. Oh God, he, he gave you a new walk. He gave you a new talk. He gave you a new car. He gave you that promotion simply because he wanted to give you something to praise him for. I simply come to tell you that Rahab was kept because she wasn't born to be ordinary and she was kept because she yielded to God's will. But she was also kept because uh, she, she, she had a position in God's will that was bigger than where she was. I'll say that again. She had a position in God's will that was bigger than where she was. As I said earlier, purpose will always connect to something that is bigger than your current situation. There will always be something inside of you just telling you that despite your disclaimer, some way, somehow, God is going to reveal that he's going to keep you for something greater than your problems. I have just come to tell somebody uh, that, that, that there is a position God has in store for you that is bigger than where you currently are. I know you see yourself in a difficult position. I know you see yourself 
somewhere dying. I know you see yourself in Lodabar, but God sees you somewhere bigger and brighter. You may see my disclaimers, but God sees greater. You may see uh, my disclaimers, but God sees my destiny. You may see my disclaimers, but God sees my breakthrough. You may know me for my current issues, but just wait until you see God's will for my life. We, 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 we thank God for that prostitute because God has a position for us uh, that, 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 that was bigger because God had a position for her that was bigger than her situation. Oh, that's why we can't count everybody out for their current issues because one day they, 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 they may be the same reason you get your breakthrough. They may be the same reason you get saved. They may be the same reason you are able to function. Oh, God, tell somebody near you, don't count me out. Don't count me out because of my disclaimers. Don't count me out because I have been kept. I'm here to tell somebody <clears throat> that you've been kept on purpose. You are not here by incident or accident, but... God, God saw something in you that you didn't even see in yourself. I'm here to tell somebody that I've been kept on purpose. That, is there anybody that is that is grateful that they have been kept? Oh God, uh, you, you you are here on purpose. Don't, don't 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 get it twisted. I know it seems bad. I know it feels bad, but it will work out. It may seem rough, but don't lose your faith. I dare you shout from where you are. I uh, I, I need you to scream from right where you are. Don't count me out. I don't care what the adversary tried to tell you last night about your disclaimer. But I have come to tell you, you are a designated survivor. Oh, God. You are here on purpose. He couldn't kill you on purpose. Poverty couldn't take you out on purpose. Depression and oppression and confusion and distraction and disruption. He couldn't take you out on purpose. Why? Because you are here for a reason. Man, that's all I got for you. But let's talk to God before I go. God, we thank you. For your word today, God, we thank you for uh, for being kept. God, we thank you for the ability to be kept. God, we thank you for keeping us. Your word says we are to lift up our eyes into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from you, and for that, God, we are exceedingly thankful. Thank you, God, for keeping me. Thank you, God, for keeping me in spite of me. Now, God, it is our prayer that you will continue to keep us, continue to walk with us, continue to talk with us, continue to guide us along life's narrow way. God, that's our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, man. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Do you have any announcements for you for, for the people if you'll be speaking on any of the lives so we'll know? Uh, other than uh, staying connected with uh, the Amplified Movement, other than that, uh, our Bible studies happen weekly. Our, pr our prayers happen on weekly. Our, uh, man, just stay connected with the Amplified. You can find us on all social media platforms uh, at the Amplified Movement underscore. Uh, you can also look at us up, look us up on our website at AmplifiedYM.org. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely put that in the comments. Please follow young people. Follow that group. If you definitely. need a good study group, young people, I'm telling y'all, follow that group. It's young people leading the group, young people leading young people. That is great, sir. I thank you for closing thank you. this conference out. Y'all, three days of this, Purpose in the Future, Thank you to my friend Justin. Thank you to Jim, Jeremiah. Uh, thank you to the people that's sharing it. Thank you to the people that streamed it. We're going to do this again. I promise y'all we're going to do this again. We got some more coming for you guys. If that's all we have, thank y'all so much. Y'all be blessed. I'm signing off. It's your boy Charles. But y'all know, it's just a young man telling his story with my boy. Minister Jeremiah Nettleman this morning. Y'all be blessed. See y'all.